The simplest cell has to have DNA replication, repair, restriction, modification machinery, has to have a basic transcription machinery, has to have amino acyl tRNA synthesis, tRNA maturation, modification, ribosome proteins, ribosome function, maturation, modification, all the way down. And even with all of that, it has to be able to get all 20 amino acids exogenously because it has no ability to make it. It's too simple to make it. This is nanotechnology. This is building systems out of nanocomposure. You have to have all of this in a simple cell. Does anybody have any of this in the junk that they build? No, no, nowhere close. You have to have all of this. This has been computed. So you can't play this game where cells were really simple back then. All they had was a little bit of RNA. That's a bunch of nonsense. Has to have all of this to be a cell. Remember the requirements that we said a cell has to have. And so go ahead and first you have to make the simplest cell. So first you have to make all the monomeric sugars, which nobody's ever made. Then you have to make all of the amino acids in chirally pure form, which no one's ever made. Uh, You can get some some racemic a bunch of racemic amino acids from the milieu type experiments and other experiments, but never in chirally pure form. You have to be able to make the nucleotides where you have to first have ribose, then you have to have a base on there and you have to have a phosphate on there in a, in a relevant manner. And this all has to be chiral. You have to control all four of these stereogenic centers, one stereogenic center there, four stereogenic centers there. Then you have to take glycer, glycerol and desymmetrize it because both of these CH2OH groups are enantiotopic. You say you can't do that? Well, then you can't make a cell. So, nice guy that I am, I'll give you that. Now just polymerize these, put them in the polymers. I'll give you this. Just make the polymers. Just make the polymers. Go ahead, make the polymers out of these things. Nobody knows how to do that. Nobody's ever demonstrated that either. Really, really hard. Remember this? There's over one trillion ways you can hook just six of them. Now you got to hook like 2,000 of them. All right? How many ways are you going to get that chemistry right? All right. Nice guy. I will give you that as well. And I'll even give you the sequence of nucleotides. So I'm giving you the information, which is another mystery. Nobody knows where this informational code came from. If somebody tells you that the DNA itself is the code, that's a bunch of garbage. That's like saying this, this, this memory stick. You know, I just bought it, this memory. I have a memory stick in my pocket. So this memory stick, this is the information. <laughs> uh, I haven't written anything on it. But that's inherently the information. No, the information, this is, this, this, this is the medium upon which it's stored. The information is primary. So... I'll give you the sequence. I'll even give you that. Even if you had all the components, could you build a cell? A Nobel Prize awaits you. Surely you know more than a mindless early earth. So they can't do it. They can't do it. In other words, even if I gave you a cell, I give you a cell that's alive and it just dies, can you bring it back to life? Because certainly a resurrection has got to be easier than a de novo synthesis. Everything's pretty much in place. Nobody can do it. We don't even know how to define what we just lost when that cell died. How do we even define life? That's how clueless we are. I said the exact same thing I'm saying to you. I said in May with Steve Benner sitting 10 feet in front of me in the audience. You know what he said? Nothing. (laughs) And nothing is an answer in itself from a scientist. So you say, would you say this to a say? I already have. Problem after another, he says. This is what he says to the expert because he's a real chemist. He knows we can't even get the molecules made. But that's not what he tells the world. Remember, he's the guy saying, you know, we figured this out. You know, this is good. It's life on Earth, life on Mars. I mean, it's all here. Here's 41 textbooks talking about the primordial soup model, the textbooks that you guys grew up with. In fact, in fact, uh, these are upper level college. Here's intro college, upper level college doing the primordial soup model. You're still learning it to this day. Uh, unlike the claims of making life in two years or three to five years, or that most of the, many of the paradoxes have been solved, what really is the current state of origin of life research? Nobody has shown a method to make the homochiral versions of lipids, amino acids, nucleic acids, carbohydrates in a prebiotically relevant manner. Nobody has shown the mixtures found in meteorites or interstellar space could have been useful for synthesis. Even John Sutherland said, I don't think meteorites make the right sort of mixtures, but we need to have more constrained chemistry to actually make the right sort. Little bits of things can be delivered, but they're all mixed in with other things. You can't do chemistry in vast mixtures because they gum up the works. Uh, Nobody has shown prebiotic roots to the polymerization of the amino acids, nucleotides, or carbohydrates with required spe- specificities that are needed. Carbohydrate polymerization is unfathomably hard. Almost all amino acids need protection. DNA bases sometimes need protection, and you have the 2535 problem. Nobody has solved the code problem for ordering the nucleotides. Um, nobody has come close to making the higher order structures. Remember all of these things you have to have a cell? Nobody's ever come close to this. And, and, uh, and John Sutherland had the audacity to write in nature chemistry, all cellular subsystems could have arisen simultaneously through common chemistry. Boy, I'd love to see that. Nobody has ever shown the lower enantiomeric excess mixtures could facilitate the requisite high-yielding biological-like chemistries with minimization of heat release, thereby mitigating the need for chiral induced spin cell activity. We do all these computations in our mind, and we dispel 10 watts in the process. This computer is, is just putting out so much more heat. Why? Why don't we burn up? Why doesn't a cell burn up? Because of chiral induced spin cell activity. You had to have had chirality from the beginning. It's not something that you could have evolved into. Nobody can explain the requisite interactomes. Remember the 10 to the 79 billion? Nobody, even if given all four classes of molecules in any desired order, could prepare even the simplest of cells. 
Nobody has come close to synthesizing or e even suggesting how to synthesize the simplest of cells in a modern laboratory, let alone a, a sufficient suggestion on how to do this, how, how the universe could have done it in 100 million years, because that's the time from when the Earth cooled to the time where you find life. As soon as the Earth cooled, you find life. Or even 14 billion years. You want to give it the entire time of the universe? Fine. Nobody has even a hypothetical method for doing this. I have not talked at all about God of the gaps. So when people make that accusation, this is, this is just, a, just uh, uh, changing the argument. They want to attack me as an individual because they cannot address the science. Address the science. Address the science. As a scientist, I would never say that we will never understand. I couldn't do that. One day in the distant future, I presume we will understand life's origin. But for now, we are nowhere close. How do I know we're, the, we're nowhere close? It's because of this. It's because of the moving goalposts. Because every year we find out the cell is more complex than it was the year before. Not because the cell itself got more complex, but we find out about it. We didn't know about chiral induced spin cell activity. We didn't know about interactomes and the 10 to the 79 billion. And that's just protein-protein interactions. You've got protein-DNA interactions. You've got protein-RNA interactions. You've got DNA-RNA interactions. All of these things going on. Nobody knew about this. So the target is, oh, i got to do that too? So the target's further away. That's how I know we're nowhere close. Okay, therefore, scientists remain clueless on life's origin and current scientific models for emergence of life are nonsensical. Here's how you can connect with me.